sunlight hitting us on our faces. <laughs> Unbelievably beautiful. The early morning sun. If only we were more tuned with nature. Wow. <laughs> that is beautiful. Yeah, so I did about uh, 540 kilometers at a stretch about uh, took about seven and a half hours of riding seven and a half hours of riding 540 kilometers at a stretch so i really really stretched this machine out i stretched it out as much as i could just to see if uh, this can do uh, the highway business comfortably uh, the next day was uh, rainy weather wet uh, twisties well, it started raining and uh, we are about uh, 1700 meters above mean sea level and it's pouring. It's starting to pour. Uh, again, we, we uh, both me and my friend Arun, we both have the same uh, Casa Brown 450 Himalayans. We both pushed it to, uh, to the motorcycle's limits and not exactly the motorcycles limits our limits i would say um on the twisties wet twisties the bike performed flawlessly um third day was the same twisties and uh, uh dry twisties on the third day fourth day was uh, again heading back home uh 545 kilometers uh seven hours to be precise did a lot of uh, um, mild off-road trail ride business. Also did some incline, and uh, yeah. So I I I have enough enough experience now on the bike to comment on it. So the million dollar question: Is this a highway tourer? Um, it is not. Sorry to say this. This is not a highway machine uh, at all. This is just not a highway machine. Um, like I said in the beginning, all the people who are uh, raving about it, who are happy about it are people who are super happy about that. They were mighty impressed with this machine. They were mighty impressed with the Himalayan 411, the original. And they just wanted a lot more of power in this to be able to take on the shit. Um, you know, all that uh, comfortable mile munching business, this wasn't really uh, doing that for them. And hence, when this arrived in the market, people just went gaga over it. It's because this could definitely, you know, do about 10 or 20 kilometers uh, faster, or hold uh, faster paces, pace than uh, the 411. 10k, 10 kmph to be precise. But uh, yeah, can it actually do point and shoot on highway? No, it can't. Uh, the funny thing is something very interesting. What or why? What stops this motorcycle from doing uh, serious uh, speeds? It's this engine. <laughs> this engine is a race-ready engine. 
It's a race built engine. It's not an engine for you to putter along, cruise. Um, the suspension, the ergonomics, after I've uh, done the tweaks, I've uh, introduced bar risers, I've swapped I've the position of the uh, handlebar clamps. After all that business, this is unbelievably comfortable to sit on and just keep going. I'm not somebody who has ever had problems with seats. My uh, core is pretty strong and uh, I, I don't really ever feel uh, uncomfortable on, on seats. The step seats are fantastic. They're what they're, they're supposed to be, how they're supposed to be if you really want to do long distances. The one-piece seat. The one-piece seat is only for people who really want to do a lot of aggressive performance style uh, off-road riding. So, so if you have a little bit of a step and if you have a little bit of a contour here, this helps with you sitting into the motorcycle. Very important. Yeah, so uh, never really had a problem with the seat. This motorcycle really can do distances as far as ergonomics is concerned. The deterrent here is the engine. The engine, for all the people who keep saying that this motorcycle has a buzz, just a buzz and nothing more, I think they are all uh, people who can hold uh, speeds of 100 and 110 kilometers per hour and not more on the highway for uh, longer periods of time. It's a simple, simple case of grip strength. There's nothing else to it. This is all about grip strength. So if you have very good grip strength, then you can hold this motorcycle at about 140 kmph indicated throughout any distance. And if you have weaker grip strength, then this bike settles at 90, 95 kmph and not more. 90, 95, 100 max. That is the butter smooth operating range of this motorcycle. And anything more, you are asking a lot from your uh, hands. It, um, now, people have, will have all kinds of things to say. People will have uh, people who have uh, fallen in love with the machine, just like me. <laughs> I have also fallen in love with the machine. Will tend to be a little biased, and uh, like how I am biased towards the 411. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> people will have plenty of things to say about uh, what I am putting out now, as far as grip strength is concerned. But uh, uh, honestly, if all of you have uh, taken the trouble of taking this motorcycle across long distances, one stretch of highway, wanting to uh, point and shoot, um, you will definitely feel what I'm talking about. Yeah, these grips, these grips change the ball game. We took this bike initially on small rides, like about 300 kilometer rides, and we, we uh, with the factory grip, and we had some serious hand pain. Um, swapping the grip, uh, honestly, has made a huge difference. Um, I would say uh, a difference of 30 to 40 percentage. But even then, even then, can I do 140 all day long on empty stretch of highways? No, I can't. Impossible. The big bikes, this is not a big bike replacement at all. A single cylinder engine, this is how it's going to be. It's going to be vibrating and it's going to have all that vibration transfer to the bars, to the pegs, and uh, you really can't uh, escape that. Again, I'm not somebody who has a problem with vibrations on the pegs, um, because uh, I'm used to it. I do have a problem with vibrations in my hand. Maybe I need to work on my grip strength um, more, even more, so that you know I can be even more comfortable with um, holding this, you know, at um, at good speeds. Yep, one more thing. People have spoken that the sixth gear is more of an overdrive gear. It's more of a cruise, relax through the distance gear. Um, and they they have also gone on to say that there's nothing on the sixth gear. There's no there's no RPMs that climb on the sixth gear. Again, I'm sorry to say, uh, absolute nonsense. The sixth gear is as strong as this. Like if you're on the sixth gear and if you were to shut the throttle the just even a little bit, the motorcycle dives and you pick the throttle in a microsecond, the motorcycle jumps up. That's how much there is on the sixth gear. Of course, if you were to push the fifth gear to its peak, like redline it and then put on the sixth gear, it's a tall gear. It'll take some time to climb. Um, <laughs> it's, it's the tallest gear. What do you expect? Um, so. Um, um, do not really end up thinking about uh, 
how uh, the sixth gear is going to not make any sense on this motorcycle. The sixth gear has enough juice to pull. The problem is that the problem is that the sixth gear is as aggressive as any of the other gears. That's the problem with this bike. Uh, I we both were wishing for an overdrive gear, a gear that would just let us cruise. We were wishing desperately for one gear, the sixth gear, so that you know, um, uh, uh, that lets us cruise, so that we have some rest given to the hands. Um, but that was not the case. This is as um, almost 90% similar to the KTM 390 Adventure. All the gears, this bloody motorcycle just um, jumps, dives, jumps, dives, jumps, dives. Just wants to keep doing that in the power band. So, for people who are used to doing highways at about 80 to 100 kmph, uh, which is the average crowd, the beginner crowd, and uh, people who are getting uh, introduced into the world of uh, motorcycle touring, you will definitely love this machine. This and and 100 to 140 to overtake is just a breeze. It's it can overtake anything. It can, and the braking, the handling, the stability. My God, I could just go on and on about all those aspects. This motorcycle is crazy stable. There isn't a single motorcycle in the market which is as stable as this. I've never felt anything this stable uh, at this range. The bigger bikes are much more uh, stable and uh, confidence inspiring. But uh, at this level, uh, the 450 segment or until 600 segment, this is by far the most stable motorcycle. And uh, unbelievable, unbelievable how they nailed all that. That is, that is to do with the suspension, nothing else. It's the suspension. Um, one more thing, the ride-by-wire. The ride-by-wire is unbelievably good. Better than the KTMs that I've ridden. Um, zero vagueness to it. Um, very, very high predictability. Um, you can, you, I mean, once you start getting used to the ride-by-wire, the ride-by-the uh, ride by actual cable wire is going to get to your nerves because that is so much more uh, sticky. And then uh, this, this is just, this is just, this is, <laughs> this has absolutely no drag. Um, but uh, does it have a little bit of vagueness in off-road terrain? Yes, it has. Uh, that's the catch. On a highway, this is tuned for a highway, highway business. This is not tuned for off-road business. On off-road business, there is a bit of uh, me trying to ask something of the bike and the bike doing something on its own. Whereas that is strictly my throttle. Yeah, we'll talk about the off-road performance uh, some other day when uh, we are actually doing a, a Ben versus the Sherpa uh, on the off, on off-road terrain. But for now, we'll just keep it the highway business. This motorcycle does 100 kmph comfortably on the highway, 95, 105. And then if you really want to shoot, if you have a good distance in uh, ahead of you and you want to quickly uh, clear that distance, wang 140, 145. Bloody thing just goes on to pull to 145 comfortably, except uh, for all the wipes in the hands. This thing can just eat uh, distance. Uh, it's because it's a race ready engine. That engine is meant to only attack. But uh, even then, nothing, nothing close to a, a dual cylinder. An Interceptor 650 or an Interceptor Continental GT 650 will coolly, uh, will coolly putter along at those speeds. At the speeds where I'm starting to have fatigue, the Interceptor 650 will be just cruising. At 100 and 120, the Interceptor will not even know what's going on in the engine. 140, I would say. But with this, some serious, serious vibes. You really need to get used to that. That's the only deterrent as far as uh, highway performance is concerned. Everything else, I would give it a 9 out of 10 or a 10 out of 10. It's that good. That good. Allows you to correct all your mistakes, uh, mid-corner mistakes, uh, wet uh, performance, wet riding uh, stability. Bloody thing behaves like it's a motorcycle which has a very good understanding of traction. It's like an electronic uh, traction control business going on 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 AI mode. Like it's picking up cues and uh, uh, getting all the traction business going on very very well. 
there's um, the rider just need not be worried about anything this will so so forgiving a motorcycle that was a beautiful machine as far as forgiving the rider goes but this just changed the ball game you can lean as much as you want because of the beautiful tires i'm just sold on the tires the tires are the tires are the best in the market unbelievable no matter what anybody says these tires these tires are crazy they are they are simply simply amazing the front end my god the front end not once not once the front end gave away um it did not uh, uh lose traction it did not uh, what do you call it um the front end washing out that did not happen we tried all kinds of uh, roads wet roads dry roads corners twisties fast pace bumps sudden braking everything everything the tire just ate it up i'm madly in love with this tire now <laughs> so siet has has figured out a rubber uh, so 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 um, well that uh, anybody almost anybody can cruise and uh, do uh, touring on these these tires you just need not be worried it's that good that good um so tires that that are brilliant suspension that is brilliant um and the liquid cooled engine my god the bloody thing we were just gunning it 115 to 125 throughout and uh, the engine just barely got up to 90 degrees operating temperature unbelievable unbelievable the fan did not come out come on even once even once unbelievable and then when we start doing off road terrain the fan kicks in so uh, yeah that's that's what it is um highway business means nothing to any any motorcycle um as long as you have the oil changed regularly the air filter all clean highway business is no big deal for any motorcycle what matters more is when you heat up the machine and then when you do idling you do uh, low speed tractoring in uh, trails off road conditions that heats up the motor a lot more than uh, the actual highway business what else mm what else yeah so that would be it ergonomics 10 suspension 10 handling 10 braking 10 uh yeah one thing i missed out my god this is going to uh, this needs replacement immediately or get yourself fog lights these are uh, mad dog ox lights we'll talk about all the mods on this motorcycle some day get yourself these auxiliary lights or you're definitely going to land yourself in trouble some day this thing is going to end up killing you that's how poor and pathetic the light is from that uh, headlight i really don't know how uh, roland field um approved this this is this is ridiculously uh, uh poor uh, in terms of the throw and the mirror yeah i will again talk about the mirror i've taken the double takes from the trail machine it's become a hardcore off road machine so yeah i've taken them out of that and i've put it on uh, uh the sherpa and uh, the mirror the stock mirror just keeps going off at speeds um no matter how hard you, so if you tighten it a little too much then again uh, we have issues with that vibrations so um and uh, it didn't really have enough field of view so uh, got the uh, double takes put on uh, the sherpa and yeah doesn't really look the part but i love uh, the mirrors the mirrors offer fantastic visibility and i'm more than happy uh, about that uh yeah the fox seal covers they did their part they they do their part uh when you have uh multiple weather conditions and you're doing uh a long trip where you know you really can't go about washing and cleaning your motorcycle every day that takes care of all the gunk um the chain stretched quite a bit <laughs> about 1000 250 kilometers of thrashing and the chain there you go stretched a little too much I have to go and uh, tighten it up i'm going to and yeah that would be it nothing more nothing more um the motorcycle was covered in gunk cleaned it up hoping that nothing would uh, remain and uh, like i uh, assumed the paint work is decent enough that uh, nothing no gunk um kind of stuck to the paint work and got uh, merged so very very 
happy about that nothing to complain um, yep that would be it if uh, this video helped it helped that is all there is to it behind all that I say and all that I make there's nothing more to it I'm not trying to sell myself here and if uh, you people end up liking this video give it a big thumbs up and share this is because there's nobody out there who's talking about um, the highway performance of this machine uh, and uh, all that is wrong with it this machine doesn't settle at all this just doesn't settle so for people who want to do um, lazing around on highways and be comfortable with it 95 that's it 95 or a 95 95 is the butter smooth operating range anything more is race mode ciao